morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode on the Arboreal Obscurities channel. We are moving into episode number three of these weekly animal videos. Um, I'm trying to keep the ball rolling for you guys and make sure these do come out weekly. And then I'm slowly starting to get a few other things in order for other things that will come out throughout the week, whether they be like little podcasts and stuff um, or live streams or what have you. So we are going to not talk too much on today's video. We're going to move right into the episode. But before we do that, I want to say thank you to everybody who has been buying um, some of our new merch. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. And it's even cooler when you guys do post that you have purchased something or you're wearing it. Um, it's really cool to see. So thank you to those of you who have purchased. Um, I would name a list of names, but I will do probably just a big thank you video at some point in the future. So for now, you guys know who you are. Um, thank you. We appreciate you. And uh, yeah, the love and support is awesome. So thank you guys for that. And for those of you guys who did not know we had merch or have not purchased merch yet, make sure that you check out our Redbubble. Um, I'll put the link for it down below. And then I will put a link in the description as well. And then I would also like to say um, thank you for everybody who has recently started following the Instagram. That's where I try to tell you guys weekly that we spend majority of our time, answer most of our questions, have the most fun just with our collection and the hobby. And uh, yeah, I've noticed a, an increase on Instagram and I'd like to thank you guys for that as well. I noticed a lot of those people have come from here. So uh, yeah, thanks a bunch. And for those of you guys who are not following our Instagram, I'll put that down below as well. Make sure you go follow arboreal.obscurities. Um, anyways, we're going to roll right into today's video. On Instagram, we did another poll we're doing them weekly. Um, you guys seem to participate in them, so it's been more fun to do it that way. And we asked if you wanted to do a video on the Boiga guanziensis or Boiga cyania, and you guys chose Boiga cyania, which for me um, is perfectly fine because I love that species. They I truly enjoy keeping them. Um, they're one that I've loved from the very beginning. They're breathtakingly beautiful, and they're just a, a really cool animal. They've gained a lot of traction in the hobby as of recently. There's a lot of people keeping them privately now, which is really cool to see. Um, the more of us that are keeping this kind of stuff and paying attention to how to keep it appropriately um, are going to have success with reproducing it, and that's only going to make the longevity of this species um, even better. So you can't have conservation without preservation these days, so it's really cool to see more people keeping them, and I'm excited to talk about them. So. Without rambling too much, let's get into today's video. I will, uh, I'm probably just gonna pull one out. We don't really need to take them both out, but I'm gonna grab um, one that, in my opinion, is a bit bluer than the other one, and that's gonna be something cool we can talk about as well. They come in a variety of shades of green. So, green cat snakes coming right up. Give me one second, we will be right back. All right, you guys, so I moved the camera angle a bit because the other angle we were working at kind of um, put a red tint on this guy and changed the color up a bit. But I am going to show you, he's being a little bit uh, touchy right now. Honestly, that's something we can we can note on first. This is a species that's pretty uh, movement dependent. Um, very, very good eyesight. They react to movement um, very sporadically touch even more sporadically so when you first get them out usually you do want to let them just calm down a little bit um they can be a, a little bit cantankerous they will definitely give you a bite here and there if you give them the opportunity to so they're good at, at defending themselves and for good reason um we will note on first uh, where these guys come from this is a species that is going to have a very, very wide range um, compared to a lot of other species of Boiga. So Boiga cyania can actually be found through India, um, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Thailand, China, Malaysia. They have a very, very large range. Um, and he's actually, you can see he's kind of like seeking out a spot that he can try to bite me to see if I'll put him down. They are good about that. Um, good for themselves, not necessarily good for us. but. They are really good snakes once they get a little bit of size on them. Um, he is kind of the moodier of the two, which is partially also why I brought him out. I'll bring him a little bit closer so you guys can actually get a good look at him. But this is Floki. Floki is a, a green cat snake. Um, he definitely has a little bit more of the 
the teal kind of blue color to him. He's not in shed or anything. He just is like naturally this kind of jade shade of green. Um, really awesome snake though. Now Boiga cyania are a medium to larger Boiga. Uh, they have a heavier body, something more like a Boiga melanota. They are pretty thick for what they are. Um, and they are gonna reach five to six feet. They get pretty girthy body on them and pretty long. So they are a medium um, to slightly larger size Boiga when they are full grown. And this animal right here is only a year old. Um, Floki was picked up from Dan Maleri, uh, DM Exotics, about a year ago when he was still a tiny orange red little neonate. And has been growing fantastically for me. Um, these guys are not shy to go after food whatsoever, so that's definitely helpful when it comes to keeping them. And they are going to be a pretty good tempered um, snake when it comes to habitat and things like that. They're pretty good at acclimating to a few different environments. They tolerate fairly cold weather well, and then they tolerate pretty warm weather well. So they are just overall a really, really, I want to say easy to keep Boyga as far as some of the others go. I think Nigriceps are also one of those slightly easier to keep ones. Your mangroves really do tend to require a little bit more than a lot of other species, which is funny considering they're probably the most kept species. But these guys are going to, it's crazy, but these guys will do fine. Um, not all the time, but these guys can tolerate temperature drops down into the 50s, and then they can also tolerate temperature increases up into the 90s, where that can be really critical on either side of the fence with a lot of other species of Boiga. Another really cool thing about Cyania is they don't have quite as long, I say quite as long, it's still a, a good period of time, but not quite as long of an incubation period as some of the others. Um, like Nigriceps, for example, have about 110 to 120 day incubation period. That's about four months. Um, sorry, I keep saying I'm a lot. I'm trying to keep my train of thought. These guys have about an 85 day incubation window. So it's basically an entire month shorter than some of the other species, which is pretty cool. Guanziensis are similar in that way. Um, so overall, these are a really awesome animal. Now they can, like I said, range many different colors so floki here definitely has more of those like teal aqua turquoisey kind of colors on him you see yourself um, but they can have this color they can have a dark green they can have a lime green they can have different uh chin and belly colors he has actually more kind of like a peachy chin color right now you can get blue chins, white chins. Um, they are fairly variable amongst the cool color spectrum that they live under. And then their eyes can be completely silver or they can be almost completely black. So they're just, they're just really, really pretty little snakes. You can have a little bit of pattern in them like this one or no pattern at all. You can tell he wants to get me. You can usually tell if they're wanting to bite because you'll actually see those little venom glands the way that they are. He's squeezing his head and he's getting ready for a bite. But I mean, so long as you can read these animals, you can work with essentially any Boiga and avoid things like getting bit. Uh, if you guys remember the video when I unboxed these, if you've been following long enough, they were very, very spicy when they first came out of the bag. And they were biting me left and right. They were bright orange. But overall, just really awesome little snakes. So we didn't talk too, too much about these guys. Um, there's not really too, too much to have to talk about, honestly. So what we are going to do is uh, we're going to let Floki just go settle down. They are still young, so I don't like to overhandle them. Um, we just made this kind of a short little introduction video. Again, 
I've been wanting to put something out for you guys every week, so I hope that you still enjoy these episodes. I will show you more of both Floki and Helga in future videos. Um, but for today, I think that's all we've got. I'm going to go let him sit back down. He'll get a little bit spicy. Um, so before he gets a little bit too cranky, we're going to go ahead and put him away. As always, you guys, um, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching the videos. If you like the videos, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell. That way you know every time we upload a video. Go back to the beginning of this video so you can check out the links for our merch and for our Instagram. And as always, I love you guys. I couldn't and I wouldn't do these videos without you. And I will see you on another episode. Peace. That feels good!